All right, let's see if this thing will work this time. All right, looks like it is. So apparently everybody had a good time over the weekend at the uh, Eager Yule celebration. Mike, Melissa, I heard you guys did a good job. Awesome stuff. And the second thing is, uh, I had an idea the other night thinking about I get I, I get an email every time my name is mentioned in academia.edu. And like 650 times so far. Probably people trying to discredit my opinions because I I see much of it as ridiculous. Necessary, but largely when you're writing a scholarly paper, you're not inserting your own thoughts or opinions. You're talking about your ability to collect research from other people's ideas and parrot what may, may essentially be considered or come to find out is an incorrect position on any given idea. And I see this happening a lot with also true. Fortunately, much of the Theodish idea, and but I see it show up with some with the universalists. What, what, what's your source? What's your source for that? My source. Motherfucker, my sources, I know more than you. Huh. Here's the thing about when you look at these academics and you look at the articles that they produce, they're very good. They're very good. They're very intelligent. They're well articulated. They're important. They contain a, an immense amount of information. And none of it, well, 98% of it has nothing to do with what we're doing today. And that's kind of a scary thought for a lot of people. So my perception of Odin is going to be much different than somebody on a battlefield in prehistory or hunting a mammoth or in the Iron Age or in the Bronze Age. You know, it's important that, yeah, I need to be aware of those things. I need to be aware of how they perceived it. Do those challenges look anything like my challenges in life? I would submit to you that the majority of them do not. We live in a world where even the most poverty stricken individual can eat as eat as a king. You can go to the stores and the and the shelves are groaning with produce and food and stuff. You don't have to do anything to get. <sighs> so right there, the struggle for survival, fertility, and the crops and the harvest, that changes some, doesn't it? my relation to those deities is going to be somewhat different than, than their relation to those deities. And while I should be aware of that for their place and how to access the position in my train of thought, how those deities might have operated in the past and how they might operate today, my relation is going to be entirely different. Same thing with gods of war. Same thing with gods of love, things, gods of fertility and goddesses of the harvest. When I see people so thoroughly entranced in that, I wonder, do you understand what you're doing? Do you understand why you're making this research? More often than not, it's to be perceived as more right than the next person. And here's the problem with that. If I'm operating out of a position where I'm simply more right than the next person, where is my opportunity for growth or a spiritual foundation is it present even? Okay, I may have a grand idea. I've got a scholarly approach. I've researched it. And yet there's a disconnect there. All of my research that suggests this is how they did it in the Iron Age has very little bearing on how I'm going to do it today. So maybe I do have a source. What does it matter? Okay, good. You know that. The one thing that hasn't changed is the emotional state of individuals. I haven't created any new emotion and nobody in the last 10,000 years has created any new emotion. We love, we hate, we're grateful, we feel sorrow, we mourn the loss of people, we celebrate the, the foundations of love, 
Now, in that context, I've got an unbroken line all the way back to the beginning of how to relate to these deities, don't I? Yet, where am I going to find my archaeological source that supports that presupposition? It's not going to exist. We can no more relate to doing the blood eagle on somebody than, than they can to going to an abortion clinic. Well, that would be a most heinous crime, wouldn't it? Unless it was a crippled child, and then it'd be thrown into a ditch and left to die. But be that as it may. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. So why are we still leaning towards these ideas that the only valid viewpoints concerning the integrity of our spirituality must originate within an archaeological background? Still people quoting Dumazel and Sidek and several others who, while they may have done great archaeological work, the body of what they're talking about pales in comparison to, say, Joseph Campbell or Carl Jung or perhaps even Nietzsche, who represented the middle ground of that entire thing. The understanding the man, understanding the woman. And then Julian the Apostate suggests that what is a God, but a being that knows himself or herself so much more intimately that their thoughts create their reality. What an amazing idea that we might have that within ourselves. Will I find that written in stone somewhere? Nope, because I'm not struggling to survive. I'm not struggling to put food on the table right now. Now, I've been in these situations, but that's not the way it is now, is it? So why should I listen to anyone who's not allocating the appropriate amount of resources, thoughts, and attention to how I might best create a thought process that allows me to thrive in this world that I live in now? Just that I'm not LARPing. And there's a lot of real idiots out there that talk about what they think they know because they've read and they understand the lore. I would submit to you that they don't understand. Come here from Sikkim when you get right down to it. Dev Martel being a prime example of that. And yet, there are thousands of people that listen to him as if he might be intelligent. And what does that say about them? Well, it says there's a great willingness to follow this path there's a certain romance, a charm to it. Because I can understand these intellectual ideas and never have to change a damn thing about how I operate in this world. I can still be a fucking loser and never have to grow up. I can still be the person that failed to launch properly into this world. <laughs> I can still be a drunk. I can still be a shitty partner. I can still be a failure at many things. But as long as I have this understanding of this intellectual idea that represents the spirituality of our past, well, I may get a pass from certain other intellectuals and never do a thing with my life. Hmm. So do you see what's happening with the snake oil salesmen that abound? When do we step up to the plate with regards to this spirituality and begin to engage in it as a spiritual undertaking instead of an intellectual one? Therein lies the crux of the problem. Because right now there's only one individual that's led that charge and that's been me. And it's a terrifying thing for anyone that pays attention to me to be able to stand up and say, well, Brian said, whoa, my gosh, he did, he did. yes. Probably because I called you, probably because I called him a fool at some point for not growing up. That's just the way it is. I don't need to mince words and I don't need to back away from them. I'll stand by every one of them. Now, if I was wrong, which is a fairly rare occurrence, I'll learn something, won't I? In the meantime, if you want to become something more, pick up one of my books and see if you can read it. 
embrace some of those ideas that suggest that it's your thoughts that are fucking up your life and not anybody else's. You can have a profound intellectual understanding of archaeological things, these academia, academia.edu articles that I get literally every day that I read through and look at, and from, from bractates in, in Europe to these to the uses of the secondary uses of the carved stones in Gotland. I get them all the time. They're 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 well written. They're published. And they provide an amazing amount of sources and details. And yet none of it tells me how to live life today. Not a goddamn bit of it says, hey, Maybe you need to quit sitting there looking at that shit over there. Maybe you need to quit worrying about all this other nonsense. Maybe you better get your feet underneath you, and go to work, start making a paycheck so you can earn a living or build your own company. Though I would submit to you that many of the people that would rather engage in an intellectual argument concerning what they think they know lack the discipline of character to begin to build their own operation. And I hope that pisses off everybody because that way they might do something about it. That way they might step up to the plate and really become what they're supposed to become. And I don't give a shit if you hate me about it or not. Go do it. And you'll be forced to grow. You'll find that understanding some of these intellectual ideas that everybody wants to talk about and are vitally important with regards to understanding our spirituality, um, they may not necessarily have any kind of sway in keeping our emotions in check and understanding how to put that ego where it belongs, that is to get rid of it. And every time I say that, there's always wailing and gnashing. Well, we need a little bit of ego. So we can, how about you get up and do something? Why don't you demonstrate your, cap your capabilities and your abilities instead of talking about them online? This is the great thread of the meta that's coming out. Why would anyone ever need to go out into the world and develop themselves to pick pick things up that are heavy and put them back down to engage in physical struggle with another individual to have the courage to risk loving someone and falling on your fucking face. Why would you ever need to do that when you can get in the meta and be whatever you want to be and sit there with, as Paul Wagner said, Cheeto dust on your pants sitting in mama's basement, which was a brilliant line. I wish I'd have thought of it. Do you see the problem with what's going on here? Biggest thing that people will most often say is you're just trying to make money off of it. Why the fuck should I give this away for free when 90% of what I've gotten is blowback from idiots that don't have the courage to step up to face life? Think about that. You know, we face a lot of turbulent times. And here's the thing, it comes full circle. We're going to face challenges and decisions that rival those that needed to be made by our ancestors. I can have an intellectual understanding of that. If I don't feel it in here, 